Hello and welcome. In today's video, we will be following along on an online class, an online art watercolor class for three hours straight and see how much we can actually get done. I thought this would be a great opportunity to use the Hanamule sketchbook again. This is the new 100% cotton sketchbook and this is the only painting I've done in it so far and I absolutely love it. However, I accidentally skipped the first page so we could probably do that today and I thought I would use my Winsor & Newton professional grade paints. And this will be a fun experiment to see if these annoy me as much as they have in the past or not. <laughs> so we will see how that goes. It should be an interesting morning. Let's get started. So more than a year ago, more like a year and a half ago, I signed up for this class 101 class that Painting Hyun does and she is on YouTube. I will link her in the description box below because her classes are amazing. However, she had this class that she put out kind of right before Christmas in 2020, I believe. And all I have done in her class is the very beginning things, which was sketch a tree, sketch a tulip, and then she had us paint a leaf. So I did that. Let me get some light on the subject here. And that's pretty much it. So how I have kept the class active is just by visiting my classroom every single day and I get these points. So you can see I visited like three days in a row or four days in a row now and I have 2,000 points. So I say, sounds good. That's great. And then I go to my classroom. <laughs> this is so bad, you, you should not do this. Click on the class. You can see I have 49 days left. Actually, I don't need to click on the class there, but if I use my points here by just opening the page every single day and you can do it on a whole bunch of different devices, I can extend my class. You see that? Class extension, 14 days, bye, with my points. Okay, so now go to classroom and I have 63 days left now. <laughs> and I've been putting this off month after month after month after month and finally I received an email from them that said, we're no longer doing the point system starting June something and you should probably get in your classes and finish them. I was like, oh man, okay. Well, her classes are extremely valuable. Her paintings are oh so pretty. So I wanna do this today. It's 9.45 in the morning. We're gonna go straight until 12.45 and see how much we can get done in her class. And I won't be starting from the beginning. Like I told you, I've already finished some of that. You can see I have finished the introduction, the drawing the trees, the perspective. I can't remember what that was. We Oh, we had to draw like an avocado. I don't know what sketchbook I put those in, but anyway, we were, yep, drawing an avocado. You can see over here in the comments. And the leaf, which I showed you, we had to sketch a tulip. And now the one that I stopped on is doing this house and flowers pencil sketch and watercolor. So that's where I'm going to start and we'll see how far I get done. Here are some of the other students' paintings for her lesson. So they're kind of cool. And I haven't done mine yet. <laughs> All right, well, timer is on. Let's get started. So forgive the horrible screen here, but what I have to do then is watch each video, and I can't quite tell how long this one is, but I watch it sped up, she does talk nice and slowly, which is fine, but I speed it up, so I have to watch this video and that's part of the time. So each of these has lots of videos to go with them. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see at the end how many of these we actually get through. I watched this video originally because I did plan on doing this lesson a long time ago. <laughs> it was probably a year ago, the last time I watched this video. Let's see if I put my mouse over here. Does it say how long this is? Yes, 27 minutes of a video. Yeah, we'll definitely need to be speeding that up. 2-0, right there, you see that? Speed, 2-0. That's how I watch most of the YouTube videos that I enjoy watching also. <laughs> okay, I'll watch this again, do my sketch at the same time, and we'll see what goes on. It is 10.02, I have it sketched out, and now she wants us to go over our sketch lines with a fine liner. I will do that next. Okay, line and pen and ink or whatever it's called, all done. <laughs> and I feel like I'm not giving this my best effort. Actually, I definitely still wanna do it, but I'm on day five of uh, yeah, being tested positive with you know what. So um, I wanna paint 
I want to do this, I want to get through the class, but maybe I could have spent more time on this. I'm still having a blast, so I sprayed these because they're notoriously hard to re-wet. Sprayed them just a second ago, and now we'll paint and see. <laughs> we'll see how this turns out. Should be interesting. It is now 10.20. Time is flying. Because I sprayed these paints ahead of time, I didn't really notice any difference in them being hard to get out of the pan, with the exception of the permanent alizarin crimson. The water sat more on the top of that paint, and then when the brush had soaked up that water, then it just, it didn't really soften the paint that was underneath at that point. So I had to really spray and add water and dig in that one a little bit more than the others for sure. And I do really enjoy the color selection that I have here. It's actually very, very good. The thing I would add to it though would be a convenience purple. I just don't really like mixing my purples every single time I want a purple tint to my color range. So the good news is I have a lot of different reds and two different blues that I can make really neat purples out of. So at least I have a good selection that I can create, but I want a convenience purple in this set for sure at some point. And the paper resisted me in one point up in the sky, and that was about it, so I must have touched it. One lesson down, it is 10.32 a.m. <laughs> I did a little bit more than she did. She didn't do any sky color or, like, sidewalk or anything, but I wanted to, so I did. Yeah, we'll see. I'll upload my photo of this and see what she has to say about it. I did it so darn quickly. It'll be interesting to see what she says. <laughs> The next lesson is how to paint cone flowers. And so I got out a different sized Hanamule 100% cotton sketchbook for this because it required a smaller size. This is the A5. I sketched out my little cone flowers and now she wants us to use masking fluid over the whole thing so we can get a fun abstract background. And I thought this would be a great test for this paper and masking fluid because we haven't tried that yet. I have different brands of masking fluid, but I'll start with the PBO and I have this, basically it's kind of a clay tool, I believe. It's called a color shaper that I use to apply the masking fluid. So I'll put that over the flowers, get on to the next step. Just finished putting on the masking fluid. It is 10.55 a.m. I put it on really thick because she said put it on really thick. So it's a little thicker than I would normally put on masking fluid, but that's okay. By the way, I forgot to tell you guys, this paper was really easy to sketch on. The graphite is smearing a lot, however, I'm using a 0 0.5 mechanical pencil. So I see graphite smears everywhere, so maybe when this masking fluid dries, I'll try and erase some of that, but I'm not sure if I'm really going to worry about it. If I get into the masking fluid with the eraser, we could have a problem, so I may just leave it. But yes, paper is easy to sketch on. The nice thing about using this rubber applicator for the masking fluid is that it just comes right off. Ta-da! Clean like brand new, doesn't ruin brushes or even threaten to ruin brushes because it just comes off. Since this is so thick and has to dry so long, I'm going to move on and watch the next lesson and maybe I'll get ahead a little bit on what I have to do on this next. While I was watching those other videos, I was kind of holding this up and blowing on it, trying to get it to dry faster without a bunch of heat so you can see me <laughs> blowing on it while I'm watching a video or the next lesson in the background there. I don't know if it helped, but I was doing my best. It is now 11.16, and I think this is close to dry enough to paint on. It's still kind of sticky to the fingers, but masking fluid remains sticky anyway. While I was waiting for that to dry, I watched the next two lessons, which is the background, and then taking the masking fluid off and painting the flowers. And uh, it's a good thing I did, because I didn't see in her first lesson that she did some of these little spikes in masking fluid on the flowers. And I think that's going to be a semi-important element to it. And then she also didn't mask the top, I don't know, this much of each stem. So I could remove that part of my masking fluid, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. It obviously, it makes sense because the flowers shade that stem, but whatever, I'm leaving it. I don't wanna try and pull it off and risk pulling off more than I want to, but. This is the only part right there I'm a little worried about, but I figure by the time I'm done taping the edges, we'll be all good. I was kind of surprised how light painting Hyun did her background here, but I tried to do mine pretty much exactly like hers <laughs> with the lightness of the colors and all of that, but she does add a little bit of dark right near the flowers. You can see me adding that in there. And then I do the blurry poppy colors. Wait, these are cone flowers, sorry. Blurry cone flower colors in the background, but 
I just got that orangey yellowy mixture too close to the blue and made mud so you saw me dab that up a minute ago and fix it by adding some more bright color in there. It just it's easy to work on this paper. This paint always comes out really pretty. Winsor & Newton does have pretty colors. It's just harder for me to work with sometimes than a lot of the other brands of paint that I have. I was really happy though to have taken it out of the drawer and used it again because like I said, it's a nice paint and this is all of the Winsor & Newton paint that I kept in my entire collection. It's just what I have left in these full pans. It is 11.31 a.m. I just finished the background and <laughs> I'm going to re-watch the video where she takes the masking fluid off and paints the flowers while I'm waiting for this to dry. And I so want to put this in that very sunny window that's right over there, but after my experience in the last video about trying to take masking fluid off after it's been in the hot sunshine, I don't think I want to do that. And I still have not found my heat gun or, well, found it. I haven't even looked for my heat gun in the basement closet and I don't have a hairdryer, so, uh, and, and that would heat it up anyway, so, oh my gosh. Here I wait. <laughs> That's okay. I'm gonna watch her video again all the way through on how to paint these flowers and then I'll be a pro by the time this dries and I can get to that if we're not out of time. Even if we're out of time, I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm not going to stop this video until these flowers are finished. It is 11.49 a.m. <laughs> oh, this is still very cool to the touch. It looks nice and dry, but you know when your paper is cool to the touch, it's still wet, right? <laughs> oh, I so badly want to pull up this masking fluid and get started on the next step. I did completely watch the next video again. It's a 30 minute video. I watched it in two times the speed. So there we have it. I know how to do all the finishing steps, but do we dare try and pull this up right now? That is the question. I guess we can find out. Uh, that seems to be working just fine. It doesn't even seem to want to try and tear the paper, even though we're still cool to the touch. So can Hanamule 100% cotton watercolor paper handle masking fluid? The answer is it can handle the PBO masking fluid. There's not even a blue tint. Some of my students with the new bottles of the PBO masking fluid have had some blue tint left over on their paper afterwards. My bottle is really old. This is the first bottle I ever got. It's on my channel somewhere. It's probably two years old, at least. I know they say you're supposed to use masking fluid up within the first six months, but it, unless you're painting with masking fluid every day of your life, I just don't see how you're going to use it up in six months. But I'm really pleased with this because we are not even dry and it's not hurting the paper. That makes me very happy. I don't have one of those fancy masking fluid remover tools, so I just use rolled up old tape from my previous paintings. I'm getting kind of low because I've actually used masking fluid in the last couple of videos pretty often. And maybe if you had newer masking fluid, this would all come up in one glob and you'd just be able to pull it off, but that is not the case here, <laughs> as you can see. I'm gonna have to work the whole time for this, <laughs> but it'll be so worth it. It is 11.56 a.m. I just got the masking fluid off and I may have spoken too soon because I didn't really notice it as I was pulling it off. There is a slight blue tint left on the paper and I bet if we were comparing this, hang on, let me grab this other sketchbook. This is the paper to like a regular page. I don't know if we can tell, but it is definitely tinted a little bit. So maybe this blue drawing gum does leave a bit of a thing. And then I ripped the paper, like not even where it would be wet still, right here and here. And what I noticed about this drawing gum is that it is very sticky, like super sticky. So I just got a few places and we'll see if that will show through the painting when I get the flowers painted on or not. Yikes, I'm so scared about that. So if I do this video again and I use this paper again, which I definitely will, I would like to actually finish her entire class online. Even I have less than an hour left here in the three hour challenge, but I wanna try the Winsor & Newton masking fluid. And then I have this one that I've tried before with you guys. Daniel Smith, so maybe we could try other masking fluids and see what happens. But yeah, these two rips weren't even near where paper could have been slightly damp still. <sighs> Big sigh.
Oh, well, it's just a sketchbook, so carrying on with the flowers and... Like I said, it's just a sketchbook, which is kind of interesting. Does anyone else watch the Nia 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 channel? I was watching her sketchbook tour, and it amazed me how she would completely redo an entire video just because when she took the tape off the edge, for example, she ripped a small part of the paper. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's no way I would redo a whole video for that. It's, it's intense. I mean, the time it takes to film painting plus editing and then get to that point and have to redo it from scratch. No thanks. <laughs> it made me very glad that I'm not that much of a perfectionist, that I do like things to be perfect and I'm probably a little harder on myself than I could even be, but not even close to that level. But anyway, that explains why her videos are always so very well done. That's for sure. In my life, however, I have tried to learn the lesson of good enough for now. All right, there is mine. I should show you what hers looks like. Hang on, there we go. Yeah, hers is much prettier. So she put a whole, she did put full color in on her petals there, and I did the same on mine, but hers just looked better. So I think she has more distinction in between her petals, so maybe I could work on that. And she talks about the consistency of her paint you know, number one through five. I kept trying to get a really thick consistency of my paint here, super thick, but I guess I could could do a little better job with that and just get a little bit more definition. More contrast, it's all about the contrast. So yeah, I can see that's helping already. That helps a ton actually to do that and not overdo it because it can easily be overdone. And then I don't want to add like too much detail in these flowers because these are just supposed to be like little supporting flowers. They are not the main attraction. <laughs> we'll get a little bit of definition in and maybe dilute the brush a bit. Mm, yeah, that's pretty. Get some of the petals showing up. Yeah, that's better already. I'm gonna just add a little more detail there maybe. Let's pull the tape off and see what we have. It is 12, 13. <laughs> We have a half an hour, we could watch the next episode. I think we will. But let's pull this tape off. The flowers are still wet, but that's okay. I'm gonna save this tape on the side of my desk for masking fluid removal later. Tape is coming off, okay. Let's see, it's a little tricky sometimes when I put the tape on and I squish it to these next pages. Sometimes it has kind of too good of a grip and I do need to be careful, regardless of how nicely paper takes tape. So you can see a little bit of paper came off there. Nothing drastic or horrible. So this one is tough right there because it's over the top of masking fluid. Same here. And it pulled the masking fluid off with it, so that's great. And there we have it. Well, that's actually very pretty, very pretty. And the paper behaved very nicely. It dried faster than etcher paper by a little bit. And that actually makes me happy because it takes forever for etcher paper to dry. And Etcher is also 100% cotton. And yeah, this dried a smidge faster than the Etcher, which made me a happy camper. Okay, well, I guess a half an hour. Let's go ahead and watch the next episode, which is called Learn Wet on Dry Technique, and see what we can come up with for that one. Right, it is 12.31 p.m. <laughs> this is the wet on dry technique she is showing us. And I already have balloons in this little sketchbook. We'll just use this little sketchbook and do more balloons in it and I have a little different ideas on how I want to do this than hers so I will show you. I just was not that excited about doing balloons so I didn't even sketch them or anything and I was kind of much messier with these than I probably should have been because like I said I just I didn't care about them. <laughs> I didn't want to do balloons. I just didn't have any interest in it at all for some reason so been totally into umbrellas and that's not a whole lot different than balloons so I don't know what my problem is but so I kind of just threw this one together and tried what I had in my mind and then did some clouds in the background and then we'll line it with my fine liner after I get it mostly dry it's not fully dry when I do that with the fine liner but it just it ends up how it ends up and it is what it is, and I was glad to have the lesson finished. I could mark that off the class list there. And since I went completely off the rails with this one, I will be curious to hear what she says about it. All right, here is my disaster mess of balloons. They kind of look like Mickey ears or something, but whatever. 
1243. All right, we did three of her lessons. Actually, it ended up being like six of her videos or so, but three official lessons, and I will upload these, even that one, even though I did it totally off the rails, off of what she did. I did my own little thing, but we'll see what she says. So the last time that I've ever uploaded anything for her to get a comment off of was October 16th, 2021. <laughs> So she was pretty fast at responding then, within a week or so. We'll see if she responds now before I want to put this video up and get her feedback on my very quick takes on her lessons. Anyway, I like this one. This one's actually okay. This one maybe I'll like more tomorrow. I don't know. This one I'll probably never like. It's okay. But that was fun. That was full three hours of painting it was not horrible at all. It was super easy, but I didn't get very much done. I didn't get very far through the lessons. I still have so many of her lessons to do. In fact, how many do I have left? All right, so I have 14 video slash lessons to go, and I'm definitely wanting to finish them up because she has such beautiful paintings. All right, guys, that was super fun. I will link her class down below. I'm pretty sure it's still available. It looks like people are still signing up. Just don't count on extending your lessons with the point system like I did. That's a goner. If you're going to sign up for anything like this, Skillshare, any of these online classes, you need to dedicate time every single day or at least like two or three hour stretches once a week that is time to do that class no matter what. Otherwise, it's just not worth your money and don't do it. All right, guys, see you in the next video. Bye for now. What is that? Online 101 or Class 101? Oh, crap. Never mind. <laughs> Wait, what time is it? What time is it? I've got to scoot all this over. Oh, <laughs> you crashed. Wow, Jack's actually playing. And my dog is upside down. I do not know why. <laughs> He's content and happy, and he's oh so cute. <laughs>